like friend for sure like we keep going and like wait and i was like okay like they're just like kind of assholes and i was like okay cool have okay. fun like have fun in college loser Bring me the best word. hi ren thank hi. you so much for for doing this thank you for having me i'm very excited very cool i'm is adam audio? And- is it sorry <laughs> Oh no! It Is my sounds audio good. Terrible. No, it sounds all right. I mean, okay. do you, why do you have AirPods or anything like that? I don't. That's the problem. We have to take it outside because we're at a venue and it's so loud in the venue. So oh like, no, 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 no! This sounds good. It's I'm great. I'm so sorry. No, you don't have to be. You don't have to apologize at all. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Are you? You're on tour, correct? Yes. Amazing. I saw that you announced your headlining tour. Uh, I think it was yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, two years yeah. Ago? yesterday. Amazing. They, yeah, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, you're playing. I I recently moved to Nashville. I'm from San Diego, and you're uh, playing. Congrats. I think you're playing the end on like the day before my birthday. So I think we're gonna. Oh have to my go god! Out and see. I'm pl- everyone in Nashville's birthday or two. Okay, one other person was like, "It's my birthday on the Nashville show in Nashville," and I'm like, "No way." What's up with the Nashville birthdays being on September 20? Mine's the 23rd, but I know you play the 22nd. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yes, that's amazing. Well, I, whoever that person is should be there as well. We should just have a big uh, birthday celebration. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> amazing. I mean, well, again, my name's Adam, and this is about you and your journey in music. And I want to talk to you about the the album. I had a chance to hear it. It is amazing. Actually, the the single you just released is my favorite song on the album. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a really really cool record. And you have Jake Bug on it, who I love, huge fan of him, and yep. obviously <laughs> Travis Barker, uh, which is killer. So, yeah, uh, it, great great album. Um, yes. So actually, first off, where were you born and raised? Did, did I say Toronto? Yeah, Toronto. Okay, what was it like growing up in Toronto? Were you in the actual city of Toronto? Yes, I was from Toronto proper. Um, I love Toronto. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Um, A lot of people don't, or I feel like a lot of people don't love their hometown. I mean, like, (laughs) I was born in a city. And you I got to live in a cool spot, right? I mean, yeah. I grew up in San Diego, and I love San Diego. Yeah. I, I if mean, you grew up maybe in the middle of nowhere, you would yeah. be like, oh, I need to get the hell out of here. But Yeah, I guess it depends where you were born. But I love Toronto. I mean, I try and go back as often as possible for, like, you know, inspiration. I find it very inspiring. And sure. And yeah. a huge music scene there. Yes. Massive cool. music scene. It's very, like pro the arts which is right awesome. mm-hmm. like, canada is really pro the arts so especially yeah. i mean when it comes to grants and exactly, the cool yeah. things they do for for musicians and artists and, and funding projects like it, between i think new zealand is the only other spot i've ever heard of people doing those i mean the government actually funding something cool like that it's pretty awesome yeah it's very awesome <laughs> it's very rare well oh, yeah. <laughs> do you come from a musical household though um i yeah i do i mean my parents weren't necessarily like musicians but they just loved music so much like um my mom was in like a bunch of fan clubs in high school like santana fan club duran duran fan club my dad was just like like a mail-in oh, fan club like the ones like- in Sorry, tell me what about this fan club. I don't know the details, but I'm pretty sure it was like at her high school. She just like. Oh, created one. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, she's very like, just loves music. Mm -hmm. Um, Her brothers all played music. She would play like learn from her brothers. And my dad just like collected a lot of finals and like has like this massive collection, which is awesome. So. Yeah, they just put us in music when we were really young and we're like, go for it. You're into it. Right. So yeah. how old were you when you started playing or what? And what was the first instrument? Um, I was two years old and I started playing piano. Oh, my gosh. How did they put yeah. it? Two- I have a six year old son yeah. and I have no concept of I, I mean, I know what he was at, two, And there's no way yeah. I don't think he could like, come. I know. Piano. I think it was like a lot of it was more so just like 
what are you going to do with a two-year-old? Like, it's kind of just like. Just like smashing the keys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, click this, doggy house. This is the dog house. Like, that kind oh, of Oh, like a, for the black key. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, like, so these did- are the two. Yeah. It's just like, you get, like, a piano teacher. Like, we had a piano teacher that was also, like, a nursery teacher or something. Mm-hmm. So, she, like, taught us. And then, um, I mean, I took piano for a really long time. So you then, kept, did you keep learning from that same teacher or did you advance no, I on? No, okay. teachers later on to like this guy that just teaches like older people when mm-hmm. I was probably around like eight and we were motivated by like chocolate bars. So like he put a chocolate bar at the end of the piano and he'd like move it over as we like learned anything. Oh, was- so eventually you, you would get to the chocolate bar maybe at the end of the lesson? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Did you learn classic or were you classically trained or what, did you have a music teacher that you could say, I want to learn how to play this song and then he would show it to you? That was what it was. Yeah. I, that's there, cool. I, I think that's classically so cool. Trained, but I wasn't. And... But really, like, I mean, how fun is that? If you were, because oh, a lot of people I've interviewed, when you're classically trained, it almost becomes like a chore. You're like, Ugh, I don't want to go like practice all this. Like that if you can go true. home and play something that you know and, and, and enjoy, I'm sure that gets you continuing to, yeah. to, to play. That's fair. That's totally valid. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes I'm like the other day, I like sat for like two hours with this guy and like learned Claire, Claire de Lune because I was like, I want to learn this. Um, <laughs> and I had no idea. I was just like this, this one, this one, this one, this one. Cause I don't know any like real, like, how to play classical music. Sure. Can you read music? Tiny, teeny, tiny bit. But that's something I learned more recently. I never really like learned musical theory. My guitar teacher kind of taught it to me, um, uh, but like relative to a guitar. So it's, uh, I don't know. Probably not something you really need to use, obviously, yeah. and, uh, uh, especially yeah. as a songwriter. But I listen, yeah, I listened to like a smart list podcast with Dave Grohl, and he was like, I don't know theory at all. And I was like, hey, that makes you feel so much better. Yeah, I love that show. I was, yeah. I've actually heard that one too. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Will Arnett is such a, he's so quick witted. I, I listen to that so guy, and I'm funny. like, oh man, this guy's a legend. And so is Jason Bateman. I mean, yeah, the, I know. The, like just the 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 random just like one liners he'll insert like are so funny. So good. Like, he'll just be like, it. keep oh, it clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's so good. Uh, that is really funny. Okay, yeah, I know a lot of massive musicians that you would assume have like this crazy background in you know classical or know all this theory have you know no concept. They're just yeah. like, no, I just know how to write oh, amazing yeah. songs, but. Yeah. So you start playing piano at two, and then when do you play guitar? When does that? When do you learn that? I started guitar when I was uh, late. I want to say fifteen, sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you had been playing piano all the way up up to that point. Basically, yeah. Was it uh, fairly easy to learn? Just kind of knowing how stuff's supposed to sound. Honestly, yeah. I didn't think it was that difficult. I mean, as a beginner. Right. I mean, way more difficult um but as a beginner I didn't think it was like as difficult as I thought it would be I think Mm -hmm. um I also like like rhythm instruments it makes more sense to my brain like Mm -hmm. like bass guitar drums like it just makes sense to me Mm -hmm. more than piano does in a way I don't know if that makes no yeah for sure um yeah okay well, what about writing music? I did see that you wrote a song at a very early age, right? Like 13 or something? Hmm. Yeah, I started writing music really young. Um, my mom was a writer, so I always wanted to write. I would write like little, she wasn't like a songwriter. She was like a book writer. So oh, I, like a, she really? Is yeah. that what she did professionally? Well, she did it more so for fun. She was in journalism for a long time professionally, but mm-hmm. um, she still writes. She just never finishes things. That's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she's great. She's an amazing writer. And I was like, I want to do that. So I would write little books and like show them to her, whatever. So I was like writing from a young age. Uh-huh. Would she like help edit it with you or like? Yeah, kind of, like read it. So rad. And stuff. Yeah, very fun. Um, but she'd also write like a lot of poetry, which is like mm-hmm. pretty similar to songwriting. Songwriting is just poetry in a way. Sure. So, yeah, I kind of 
get so along. you were writing and then what you because obviously you knew piano you're like okay i'm gonna throw these chords together and kind of attempt to come up with some sort of melody is that how it all really started for you exactly yeah okay. i was like i consumed a lot of media very young and i like still still do mm -hmm. um and that was really inspiring for me, especially like the first song I wrote. I had no like real life experiences at 13, you know, like, sure. <laughs> or like whatever. So basically everything came from like media and whatever. So. Oh, so did you write it about things you saw like on TV or on the computer yeah, or something? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And did you, did you perform it to anyone or show it to anyone? Yeah, I recorded it. I put it on YouTube, I put it on SoundCloud and I took it down because I got made fun of relentlessly and I did you really oh my god yeah like at school oh yeah I oh, wow how did yeah. you continue was that I mean having that happen to you on the first song and the first thing you put up like how did you have the you know kind of courage to continue to do it you just did you, I, mean, I mean I stopped caring okay. I like and at that age like that's like what is that eighth grade seventh grade it's hard. When kids are mean anyway, right? They're That's so like the mean. worst. They're so mean, but they're always mean. Through high school, they were mean too, like oh, about really? my music and stuff. And I was like, okay, like. You showed them, right? Oh my God. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Is there a bug? Yeah. Yeah. I accidentally just hit it. I feel so bad. It's still alive though. Um, but, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That was so scary. Sorry. Um, so. Yeah, but yeah i got pretty made i got made fun of a lot in high school and middle school because of it but but you like, didn't you just kept going and care going. like were you just writing the songs putting them up and then if people trash it you're like whatever i don't really yeah, care what you I think yeah i didn't care and now all these people are like oh my Dang. god i'm so proud of you I'm so oh, like that's awesome i would yeah. that was gonna ask you that are people coming out of the woodwork like i remember you know hey yeah. remember me from high school and you're like yeah you're the dick that was making fun of me for my exactly. song no exactly <laughs> it's like i was horrible but i it just like i just distanced myself from like mm -hmm. everyone through high school i'd like go home every day for lunch and like i liked it like that i mean i'm definitely more of a person that likes to be by myself and i think introverted that yeah, I think it was a big character building moment for me. So, mm -hmm. would you write like about those feelings that you're getting through school? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I it, I wouldn't write like directly about that, but it would just like kind of fuel it, you know? Right. Yeah, because your lyrics are. I mean, it makes sense that your mom's a writer because your lyrics are so good. Like you're <laughs> such a great lyricist and songwriter. Um, and the way you you uh, like there's a song on your record. I think it's the second song. Uh, it's about the uh, king of Brooklyn or oh, king, Julian, uh, king of Manhattan, king yeah. of Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about like going to see the Mets and like just like all these things that you're adding into the song. I'm like, how do you even <laughs> like this? The sentence structure, but how it's you sing it and, and it all flows and makes sense. It's like to me, that would be so difficult to to use certain like descriptive words yeah. and like and like drop us something like the mets to make it in the song that actually makes sense like i, I was just blown away by thank your you. your writing on the album thank you so much yeah i'm i'm a big lyric person so mm -hmm. i kind of just try and make the music fit the lyrics if that makes sense yeah is it so I'm is like, it something like you have the lyrics and you're like okay i'll just try to make a melody and have this kind of flow together is that what the process basically, usually is basically i don't like being like following like such a formula when I make songs because I'm like right I to, like my writing is a little bit like it's pretty like literal in a way but it's also very like broad like that song for example super literal but mm -hmm. like um it's just like I needed everything to like make sense so I just spent a lot of time like making sure that those lyrics fit um and yeah, I it's it. it's mean, great. Yeah. I mean, like I said, and I well, I just want to touch real quick. You um, and I don't know if this is even true because Wikipedia's burned me in the past. Uh, did you do yeah. like a, a Chinese folk song or something? That is true. Yeah, it is true. And yeah. do you know Mandarin? Like, how did you do you speak yeah. Mandarin? Yeah, I mean, my my grandfather like lived in China for a long time, and he was like very adamant on us learning Mandarin. 
So um, me and my brothers all took Mandarin for a long time. My brothers studied in Shanghai for a while. Um, really? Yeah, but I quit earliest. Um, okay. I was like, this is, so, this is hard. But I did do like Mandarin competitions. Our teacher would put us in these competitions um, and I would just sing. And there's like a very like classic um, Mandarin folk song. It's called Molly Hua. And it's like, mm -hmm. everyone knows it. And it's like about a jasmine flower. And yeah, I, I just, I just sang songs. And, I was like, and you just sang it in, in Mandarin. That's, do you know, do you, can you remember any of it? Or yeah, not? I remember the whole thing. Oh, but I mean, like if somebody was, came up and started speaking Mandarin to you, would you be able to respond? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I can do it conversationally. I understand it. That's better incredible. I can speak it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just it's a hard language because it's tonal, so it's like there's a lot to remember. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, and you could be like trying to say like something like the same word like how, and it uh -huh. could have like a completely different meaning if you just say how versus like how, which is oh the, the the how your um you like your. I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, how your inflection is on the, exactly, on the uh, yeah. 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 Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Alec Benjamin has a couple songs that he translated the lyrics to in um, in Mandarin. Yeah. I, I, I talked to him a, like a couple of weeks ago and I was so shocked by that. I'm like, whoa. And he's like, yeah, it's just like a language I was interested in and, and learned. And you're the second person that I've ever spoke to that knows it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's, so it's cool. A, it's a hard language to learn, but right, right. It's, good. it's fun one to know. Sure. That's cool. That's I mean, really any cool. language is a fun one to know, but yeah. With, um, with your songwriting, you, was there like a moment that it kind of changed? Like, tell me about having, like getting through high school. Do you, did, did I say you were touring in high school or were you just touring on your songs that you had written? And like, where did the, the change happen as far as like, what was the first little success moment you had? Um, when I, when I signed, that was like, Oh yeah. Huge. Like, okay. And when was that? How, really? like, how, what year was that? That I was in 12th grade. So oh, wow. Two years ago. Okay. Yeah. But so like, you're still right. in high school. I was still in high school. So it was like, kind of like, okay, we're just going to chill for a bit. Lauren's going to finish high school. My parents are very like big on education. So they're uh -huh. like, you do well in high school. It's your last year. Just ride it just out. Finish it. Right. Whatever you want. Okay. Um, so but did they have you touring in high school or no? Um, I did like an Interscope showcase in high okay. school. So it was like, kind of just like we did like Europe, Australia, which was really fun. It was kind of like a taste of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I put my like EP out the week lockdown was announced. So yeah, I, was, I saw that. I kind of like hit. Right. So tell, okay, like, before right. we get to that piece, so you, it was the song was Waves, the one that had kind yeah. of attracted the attention of people. And do you throw that where up on your, your like where, where does um, Interscope find the song? I put it on Spotify and Apple. Like I had oh, okay. it. Yeah. Um, and it just lands with people. Yeah. Oddly enough. I'm like, like, did it, was it playlist? Like, how did you start singing? And was it something that, because from what I read, it, it happened pretty quickly, right? You're getting a bunch yeah. of streams on it. Yeah. No, it got playlisted like pretty well. And then I put out my second song and that one did really, like, really well for like, for me for like a second song mm -hmm. and that's kind of just like what that and then you start getting phone calls or messages or yeah and what was that like was that a, i mean obviously validating but was that overwhelming yeah. at all or i mean to me i was like is this nor like is this normal is this what happened <laughs> then like as i got older i was like it's not normal it's no. like <laughs> you're like the crazy fraction of one percent of people yeah. that can actually achieve that yeah, it's pretty insane. And I like remind myself of that all the time. I'm like, you should be very, very proud of yourself because this is very awesome and mm -hmm. very cool. And yeah. when you get this, um, the, you know, you're getting these messages and, and you have this song that's doing so. I, I would imagine there's other people at your high school that try to write music and are in bands and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of like people that were like making beats and like, right. That thing, like wanted to rap and stuff. And But was this would, like, a, hey, a major like uh, not only do i have a song that's like killing it i have two 
and I'm still in, you're still in school with these peers that had been making fun of you yeah. growing up. And then like, <laughs> do you even like you, do you even bring that up or you just like live life and they just can hate from afar? Yeah. I just live. I'm just <laughs> Like even in high school, I'm sure people had to be coming up to you and being yeah. like, yeah, like, hey, you yeah. know, yeah. Like, was that a thing? I mean, they were still making fun of me. It didn't stop. But like, oh, my gosh, like, like. Friend for sure, like. We keep going and like, wait, and I was like, OK, like they're just like kind of assholes. And I was like, OK, cool. Have oh, okay. fun, like. Have fun in college, loser. <laughs> really <laughs> awesome. Right? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll be touring with Young Blood. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, yeah. so from there, you saw, you you put your EP out, and COVID hits. Tell that must have been obviously de- devastating to everyone, but not only you are like riding this wave, like oh my, you know, I'm catching some success. This is taking off. I, I'm getting signed to a major label. And then this happens, and how do you deal with that? Like, I'm sure a bunch of plans got to, had to be canceled. Yeah, I had a tour, mini tour that mm-hmm. I had sold out. Like, I sold out oh, every show, and that's that huge. Canceled. Yeah, like I had two songs out, and this like it's just so annoying. Um, but I mean, it's like thankfully that's all that I had to like really sacrifice you know like sure. a lot, had a lot you know had it a lot harder and it's not like a competition but it's just like right something that happened i was healthy and like fine but mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's just a little bit of a bummer like i was just a little bummed i mm-hmm. remember the night that the project came out i just was like i'm falling asleep like i'm i was really like i was really upset I was like, I feel what, like what day did it come out? Do you remember? It came out the 13th of March. Oh, like the day everything locked yeah. up. Yeah. So that was probably a conversation like, uh, do we le- release it yet? And then it was like, oh, we'll flatten the curve in two weeks and we'll all be yeah. good. And then it's like, uh oh. Yeah. Oh, man. It was, it, it, yeah. I, I was, I was, I was pretty upset that day. I remember being really upset, but what can you do? Right. You can't. Yeah. Well, do you once that's out and obviously didn't get a chance to really support it do you just go back to the drawing board and start writing more songs yep yeah right away okay and did that was that what became the second ep of yours yep second ep um fuck a lot of my friends was in the middle there somewhere it was set as a single and then and that one did huge numbers yeah that one did really well so funny because i was like I don't really like this song. <laughs> now I love it. Now I love it. At the time I was like, this, I have one friend, like who am I singing about? I, I don't know, but. Um, it, but it went off and like to, to continue to have these big, big moments, I'm sure it just continues the, the validation of what you're up to and what you're doing. That was, yeah, that was big for me. That was mm-hmm. definitely really big for me. So yeah. And then writing, the second EP, we wrote it in Montreal, and that was like one of the summers where it started like kind of phasing out a little bit. It was like getting a bit more chill. Like I would see people, but like make them test before. It was like that okay. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we did, we did that. That's how we wrote the EP, and we wrote the entire EP like uh, in a, two weeks in Montreal. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah. Pretty insane. And that, yeah, and that comes out and, and again just does incredibly well. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, I, I, I love writing so much. So it's like any chance I'm like, let's mm-hmm. go. So you're just constantly writing. So like the, the, the fact that you could follow up the EP with another one within a year that wasn't a big deal. And now you have a full album coming out. Yeah. Like so what like once the EP's out, like, tell me about now getting into a, a full album. Was that totally different? Is it a different mindset? Or did you know it was going to be a full album when you started writing it? Yeah, no, I did. Funny enough, like, I was, I, I mean, I think a lot of people were. I was terrified. I, because I was like, this is an album. But mm-hmm. I was like, I was writing with um, Mike Shinoda for the album. I was doing a few songs with him. And I was wow. Like to, I was said to him, I was like, 
I'm so nervous. Like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm scared. Were you nervous like, around him, just because it was him or just nervous no, in general? No, I was nervous about it, like, debut, like being my debut album. And mm-hmm. he was like, because obviously, like, he's a legend and has, like, a, like sure. Link Park has so many albums out. He's like, it's scary, but it's just like writing an EP. He's like, uh-huh. you're writing a longer version of an EP and you will have so many more to, like, do whatever you want on. And like, this is just the start of this. And I was like, that makes me feel better because for mm-hmm. me, it was like consuming me. It was like actually consuming me. And it still like does in a way because I'm like so scared about it and whatever. But that was like really helpful for me. But then there were some people that were like, yeah, this is your, de- this is your debut. And I'm like, yeah, it is my debut. So I'm kind of just like this all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, having two EPs out, that do well, I'm sure helps, yeah. obviously. But in this world of not a lot of people are putting out albums, the fact that you're putting an album, I think that says a lot about you. I mean, you could just be like, okay, I'm going to release a single and then I'm going to write another single and then just play this game of like, put a song out, let it sit there for four months and then, you know, follow, follow, follow it. But the fact that you have enough songs that are that good that they could all stand on as a single and you're going to put it out on a record. I mean, I think that's that's something that not a lot of artists are even doing now. I mean, some it takes some artists like four or five, you know, releases before an album is even in the in the you know question in the equation at all. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I, I love the I love making a project. It's it's a whole different thing than just putting out a sing, like a single or whatever. There's a lot of creativity behind it and there's more than just the music which is awesome and it's fun it's a fun process so mm-hmm. yeah I like, I like so you it. knew going into it though that it was going to be a full album and uh yeah. okay and then when you start writing the album tell me like okay what was the first song that you said okay this is this is the, the direction like was there an like an umbrella of kind of an idea you wanted to to run with yeah it was when i wrote amelia which is the closing song of the project that's when i was like I know what this album's going to be. Um, uh-huh. And it really helped shape the album. Um, mm. Which is a great song. Thank you. It's very, it's like a slow, like more chill yeah. song on the record. So I, I said Julian the King was the second song. Uh, and it's not, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> As I look now at the thing I have, which is just like kind of the record all over the place. It's like right in the middle. Right, right. I know yeah. I have the, the track listing now, but it wasn't yeah. in the order that I <laughs> It's all good. I, I wouldn't expect you to have the order, to be honest. I really oh, that's order. funny. Okay, so because that one definitely wasn't the last song on the, or first song on the one I'm listening. All right, yeah. the, the, never mind. Anyway, yeah, you're good. So that started it, and that's the first song on the record? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the last one, yeah. Our last song on the record, yeah. sorry. Last song on the record. Mm-hmm. And from there, do you just work back? Like, t- okay, so now you know, and uh, Amelia is the song that's going to set the, the tone for the album. And uh, from there, is it about this person or like yeah, an idea it, of this person? Yeah, it's all like follows the idea that like everything is being addressed to her. And so everything's almost like a letter to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like she is supposed to like symbolize this part of your brain. So she's a part of you. She is like yourself um Mm -hmm. and throughout the project you just put more and more stress on her because it starts way more innocent and then it kind of gets a little bit deeper and a little bit more emotional as the project goes on Mm -hmm. and um you put more like emotional weight on her until she kind of just like disappears like she can't take it anymore so it's like kind of you know talk like open up about your feelings open up mm-hmm. about like everything like talk to someone because that helps or else you'll start like losing bits of yourself which is like when i miss myself it's about it's like a foreshadow to that foreshadowing that mm-hmm. like, oh yeah because yeah. that is that's the first is that the first song on the record yeah okay so that's the one that starts it up and i and i love how it starts like it's a it's like an acoustic i mean it's acoustic in the beginning and it kind of then it builds up to, and it gets a bit heavier yeah towards the back of the song um it, which is a cool way to, to start the record and it sounds a bit different than a lot of the other songs on the album yeah 
Yeah, it was one of actually the last songs I wrote. It was the last song I wrote for the album. So, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, we were like, we got in the studio, we're like, we're writing the intro track today. And then we just did it. And it's like, it makes sense. I mean, sonically, it's like, yeah, it's very like acoustic. It's kind of just like, till the end, it's kind of like a kind of like more rocky, if that makes sense. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. I was just like, it fits for some reason. Mm -hmm. Just lyrically, I feel like sure. it works. Yeah. And did you work, how many, how many songs on the record did you work with, with Mike Shinoda on? The whole um, album? Well, none of, none of the songs ended up making the record album, but i think they're gonna yeah they're gonna be oh able. interesting yeah. yeah but did the f idea of the thing form with him or no not at all not really i was working with him for a while um but it was before i kind of had the idea so like we had like a bunch of great songs together but they just didn't fit on the project if that makes sense yeah. okay and so. then you then you uh get it work with a different producer on the on the rest of the record yeah I was working with Jeff, who I've literally done every project with. So, That's what yeah. I was thinking. Is that somebody that you've known for a while? Yeah, I've known okay. Jeff. We started together, basically. Well, he started a little bit before me, but yeah, we kind of built together. And grew together. Was where did, where did he start with you? Did, were you, did you already have waves and and those songs? No, oh, I, oh. I did waves with him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So did you know each other growing up? No, I mean he's just. Um, he was honestly just another Jew from Toronto and we like bonded and I was like, okay, like we're like, we had like the exact same upbringing and like we got along as friends and then we just made music together. I mean, he's like significantly like, he's been at it for like longer than I am. He's older than me, mm -hmm. but he's like, he's like a brother at this right. point. Like, I've known him for so long. He's one of the oldest or like oldest people i know not old not old in age right but right the, but one of your the long longest, longest yeah. yeah friends so to speak like was it so, how did you meet him i mean now i'm curious to know yeah. him that long and then to, he's been on this ride with you since before interscope gets involved or before the viral success of even the first song that you released yeah um my manager was managing him as well so he was like try working with jeff and i'd go to jeff's every sunday um and we'd write and i'd like bring my homework to jeff's and we'd just like get everything done <laughs> yeah so he'd smash you'd, you'd have to do your like history homework and then literally yeah, i'd like bring full like <laughs> bristol boards and like glue for my presentation like, <laughs> yeah, that's insane that's funny and then you start writing and then it's and he he's stuck with you since even the next two eps that you put out and then up until this 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 album as well yeah. he's one of the most like loyal um talented um people i've i've actually ever met probably wow that's great that is so cool oh that is so cool and then so you're on tour now yes. and then you're you're doing your own run of shows right after and it looks like you're going to be on the road for a long time right yeah. you're on you're on the road now and uh, who are you, I forgot who you're touring with right at the second. I'm with the band Camino right now. Oh yeah, the band Camino. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And then you're doing another tour, and then your own headlining tour. Yeah. So I just got off um, uh, about like a month and a half long tour, six weeks, and then I went straight to this one, which we're playing the second last show tonight, and then I have a couple festivals, and then my headline. It's like from August to basically November, which is crazy. That is so awesome. Are, are you, are you going to approach that any differently? I mean, I would imagine not being the opener and having to headline. Is that a... It's so different. Like, it feels like a different thing. I mean, it's all so fun, but being able to have, like, you could put 100% of your creativity into the show. Like, there's no limits. Like, there are obviously are limits, but, like, I mean, like, you're not being, like, to the headliner, I want to bring my own lights. I want to do this. I want to whatever. Like, it's not going to happen if you're opening, you know? Right, right. You're kind of just there. I mean, you're there to support yeah. the main act. And, and, and it's you, 
yeah you have a time limit i'm sure like exactly. okay you have this much time to play and you kind of have to you're a little more reserved because you're yeah. like I know that like a majority of these people are not here for me so i'm still like putting in 100 percent into these shows but like there's a different energy when it's like your crowd in mm -hmm. a way that's like you just because you feed off the crowd's energy so much and like having people be there for you is like so di it's so different mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty awesome though well that's so amazing and congratulations and you're also doing uh, some shows with alexander 23 as well i saw that yeah yes. very, a great person i've interviewed yeah. uh, him before it. yeah so super awesome well congratulations on everything like i said the album is amazing um I, I i really 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 dig it and uh it's oh real quick on the jake bug thing how did you yeah. how did that relationship start yeah oh my god that's the craziest one so um i've literally been the biggest jake bug fan for uh, since i was like 13 like he's one of my favorite artists actually of all time um so jeff that's one of the first things we bonded over was Jake Bug, because he also loves Jake Bug. So we wrote this song. We didn't write a second verse, and we were like, Jake Bug is going to be on the second verse of this song. <laughs> like, the other people were like, okay, like, can you just put a second verse in? Because, like, you can't hand a song in without a second verse. And I was mm -hmm. like, watch us. Watch us do this right now. So um, we told our manager, I was like, Hey Riley, um, I, Jake Bug's gonna be on this song. And he's like, okay. And like months go by. And did you have this confirmed at all, or was it just like no, a, no, it was a manifestation, it was just a shot in the dark, a manifestation. Okay. Like okay. you were just like, yeah, Jake Bug's gonna be on the It's like the yeah. secret. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then like months go by, and I get a text from Riley, and he was like, hey, here's an update of Let You Down. And I'm like, what did we update and let you down? Like. I was just so oblivious. I, I was so oblivious. I was like, what was being updated? And I played it in the car. And then Jake Bug started singing. And I just bawled my eyes out. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Falling. It surprised me. That is so special. Wow. Yeah, it was really awesome. That was one of the moments where I was like, oh. I like yeah. called all my friends. I called my singing teacher. And they were like crying. Because they're like the ones that know, you know? Mm -hmm. So. He's such a great person. Have you had a chance to meet him or just have that on the? No, I spoke to him over text. That's the extent of our conversation. I'm like, I, I don't even know if I'd be able to talk to him in person because I'm like, I'm like. He's, he's such a sweet person. He, you would yeah. be totally able to talk to him. Uh, yeah. I, I, I met him one time uh, when yeah. I was working for a radio station uh, in San Diego and he came by and did like a little acoustic thing and he was so cool. He took, I have an older son too. He took a bunch of pictures with them. He let him like, you know, tinker around on his guitar. I mean, he's just such the sweetest person. Awesome. And I hadn't seen his name come up for a while. So I was yeah. like, and to see him on your record, I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's so rad. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely like, like the, it's like, a, like an acoustic -y kind of like classic Jake bug. Yeah. Which is awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much, Ren, for doing this. I, I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to go see you. I'm going to celebrate my birthday at the end Yay! with you. Uh, and, and I want to see your headlining show. I'm super excited. And I do have That's one fun. more quick question for you. Yes. Actually, two. Now, are you going to put the record out on a vinyl? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Hopefully, yeah. it'll be at that show or I'll have to order it. Yeah. And second, because <laughs> oh, yeah. I know that's been a, been a thing okay, where it's well, hard to get them. Yeah. Uh, well, I would love that. But um, and second, if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah. Um, just keep like, stay true to yourself. Don't let anyone be an asshole because people will be assholes. Don't let it get to your head and be honest. Be honest with yourself. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, um, thing, everything takes time. So mm -hmm. don't expect it to be like the movies. Bring it back for you.